secant of 5 pi over 6. So we've got over 6, so that's a 30 degree angle, and we're almost all the way to pi. And so we've got 1 half as the short side, root 3 over 2 as the long, and because we've gone to the left, it's negative. I want the reciprocal of the cosine. So that's 1 over x. So I'm going to take my x and just flip it over. 2 over negative root 3. Multiply by root 3 over root 3. So you get negative 2 root 3 over 3. Cosecant is 0. 0 is straight across. You get 1 comma 0 because we're going to the right. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the y value. So reciprocal is 0 is undefined. Cannot divide by 0. However, if we had asked for 0 over 1, the tangent maybe, 0, the y over the x, 0 over 1 equals 0. Just keep it in mind. Keep those two straight. Can't not divide by 0. Cotangent 300 all the way around. We're 30 degrees past 270. So we've got a 1 half as a short side, root 3 over 2 as the long side. Cotangent is x over y. 1 half over root 3 over 2. So we multiply 1 half times 2 over negative root 3. 2's cancel out. Negative 1 over root 3. And then we rationalize. Negative root 3 over 3. All right. So this point is given that is on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. Lots of words here. Terminal side meaning the last, sorry, where the angle ends. And standard position meaning it started, started at the positive x-axis and ended at negative 6, comma 8. And so this is our angle that we're talking about. Now they all have this reference angle, and you always want to draw your triangle back to the x-axis. Drop it down, it keeps it consistent with your adjacent sides. So use Pythagorean theorem to find this leftover side. 6 squared, 8 squared equals c squared, or in our case, r squared. Um, so 36, 64, and so c is going to be 10, because 36 and 64 make 100. So C is 10. So we want to find sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Now this is our angle right here, but it has the same qualities as this little reference angle here, as long as we keep the signs, positive and negative that is. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or Y over R. Um, 8 over 10, which reduces to 4 fifths. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 6 over 10, or negative 3 fifths. And tangent, opposite over adjacent, 8 over negative 6, or negative 4 thirds. Again, the negative, it does not matter where it goes. So this next one, we've got 5 negative 3 as our angle. Going to plot our 5 and our negative 3. So 5 squared plus 3 squared. Again, you can just ignore the negative because it's going to cancel out. Um, so you get 25 and 9. So you get 31, or the square root of 31. And by 31, I mean 34. My bad. Um, so the square root of 34. You want to look to see if that reduces at all. Uh, 34 only has a 2 in it and a 17, so I'm going to leave 34 as it is. So, again, our reference angle, sine of our angle, cosine of our angle, tangent of our angle. We want to leave them in simplified radical form. 
and so sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, negative 3 over root 34. And so you're going to want to rationalize that, root 34 over root 34, and get negative 3 root 34 over 34. Cosine is going to have the same thing happen, and so you can see that root 34 over 34, 5 root 34 over 34. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, negative 3 over 5. All right, so let's keep going. Evaluate the six trig functions of theta. So we've been given a triangle. They've given us theta. It's a right triangle. And so we can find, um, based on theta, we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So 4 over 6 is our sine. 4 over 6, or 2 thirds. And so the reciprocal cosecant of that is 3 halves. Um, you can also find your leftover side by saying, okay, well, what if our x over here, x squared, plus our 4 squared, equals 6 squared? Because we want the hypotenuse to be the 6. So x squared plus 16 equals 36. So if you subtract the 16, x squared has to equal 20. And so then x equals the square root of 20, or... 4 times 5 is 20, so that's 2 square root 5. And I'm looking for the perfect square. I'm reducing my radical, so 4 times 5, I don't pick 2 times 10, I don't pick anything else because 4 is a perfect square, and I can take the square root of it. So this side is 2 root 5. So our adjacent over our hypotenuse is 2 root 5 over 6. or root 5 over 3 if you take the common factor 2 out. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So this is 4 over 2 root 5. Or 4 root 5. And actually, let's do this. Common factor 2, so 2 over root 5 or 2 root 5 over 2. Um, I didn't flip over my cosine. Um, 3 over root 5 for the secant, or 3 root 5 over 5. And flipping over this one gives me my cotangent. And so I don't start with my rationalized one because I'd have to rationalize again um, and just get root 5 over 2. All right, given tangent is 2 over 5, so tangent is opposite over adjacent, find sine of theta, leave it in simplified radical form. Now, we're saying it's an acute angle because tangent's also positive in the first quadrant, positive and positive, or when it's negative and negative. So we're ignoring this one. We're only going to take it in the first quadrant. Opposite is 2. Adjacent is 5. We want to find the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. And so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to find our hypotenuse because we'll need it. So 4 plus 25. So we get square root of 29 for our hypotenuse, which does not reduce at all. And so then we take, say, our sine of our angle is the opposite, 2 over root 29. Or if we rationalize, 2 root 29 over 29. So from this point on, we're going to be using our calculator, and so I'm going to start a new video.